Welcome to Shenandoah Valley, Virginia, known for its frontier history and scenic drives. Few destinations in the country offer such diverse attractions as Shenandoah Valley. With the Blue Ridge Mountains to the east and the Allegheny Mountains to the west, the valley stretches 200 miles southwest from the northern tip of Virginia. The Shenandoah Valley was discovered more than three centuries ago when Governor Alexander Spotswood led an expedition across the Blue Ridge Mountains. Today, eight counties and five cities make up this region, which is as rich in culture and history as it is beautiful. In this episode of Family Travel, we'll show you what makes Shenandoah Valley, Virginia a perfect choice for your next family getaway. You'll see why families take to the road in this region, and it's a great way to soak in the distinct cultures of the valley. Join us as we travel back in time to learn how early American settlers lived, listen to the melodic sounds of the world's largest musical instrument, horseback rides through the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains, make a splash at the water park, and get up close and personal with some very friendly bison. My name is Colleen Kelly, and when I was single, I lived abroad and traveled the world. Then I became a parent and wondered, how would I ever travel again? So I set out to find a new way to travel and get back to exploring the world family style. I'm here to guide you on how to get the most out of your family vacation. Pack your bags and join me, Colleen Kelly. We're going on vacation. We start our journey through Shenandoah Valley in the town of Luray, a two hour drive west from Washington, DC. The county serves as a gateway to the famed Skyline Drive in Shenandoah National Park and is home to one of the most visited attractions in the region, Luray Caverns. Luray Caverns are the biggest and most visited caverns in the eastern U.S., seeing hundreds of thousands of visitors every year. Guided tours and well-lit paved walkways make the caverns accessible to most members of the family. Of course, to get into the caverns, you need to travel deep underground. Be prepared for a very steep staircase. We begin our tour at a popular formation known as Saracen's Tent. Look at that. Wow. That's, That's really Saracen's beautiful. tent. It looks like a castle. Yes. It's stunning in here. Yes, this it is, is pretty gorgeous. <laughs> now, how was this discovered? Well, back in 1878, Andrew Campbell, William Campbell, and Benton Stebbins were actually looking for a cavern. And above this area, there were no buildings back then, of course, it was just a field. And they were looking, and they felt cooler coming out of a small hole about yay big. And they thought that was unusual for a hot August day. So after a couple hours of digging, they finally had a hole big enough for one of the men, Andrew Campbell, to fit through. He slid down the hill, lit, relit his ca candle, looked up, and he saw the Washington column, which we saw later on. That's a brave man. Yeah, very brave. I wouldn't want to be the first one down here. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. Would you do that, girls? No. Yeah, no. there's no way. But, no. you know, I'm glad he did, right? Because yeah, otherwise, this. Yep, now we can come and see it. Well, this is... Gorgeous. We love it. Are you having fun? Yeah. Can we go okay. see some more? Yeah, let's go. I love it because everyone's everything's different. Yes, you know? everything can be anything. It's like looking at clouds. Yeah. <laughs> Tour guides lead visitors on a mile and a quarter walk through the massive chambers and towering stone columns. Tours cover 85% of the caverns, which are a designated national landmark. We make a brief stop in Giants Hall. At 164 feet below the Earth's surface, it is the deepest part of the cavern and is home to the tallest column in the cavern. And how long does it take these stalagmites mm -hmm. to form? <laughs> I'm still getting this down. It takes down. about 120 years per cubic inch. 120 years per inch mm -hmm. to grow? Yep, to grow. Mm -hmm. To just grow this much, it takes 120 years. Wow. Every tour of Lurie Caverns ends in the jaw-dropping room known as the cathedral. It is not the largest room in the cavern, but is home to the largest musical instrument in the world, the magnificent stalactite organ. So explain from the stalactites, mm -hmm. correct? So, yes, stalactites. Okay. <laughs> so the device you see on it, that is this solenoid. It has a rubber tip mallet, and when the signal is sent to it, it taps the formation, and that tapping creates the crystals to vibrate and produces the tone. So it's not a hard tap at all, it's just enough to make it vibrate. Like, I see some of the rocks, like, some of the rocks are, like, here, and they they have, like, hanging down things 
inside them. Yes, that's right. Do you know what they're called? No. Stalagmites. I just learned today. Can you say that? Stalagmites. Yes, excellent. Here's education, family travel. Learning at four years old? Yep. <laughs> Not only is Lurie Caverns a treat for the eyes and ears, but we walked away knowing a little bit more about the wonders that lie beneath our feet. A visit to Shenandoah Valley wouldn't be complete without an adventure in the mountains. A short drive from Lurie Caverns, we head northwest into the Massanutan Mountains, which lie between the Blue Ridge and Allegheny Ranges. Most of the range is part of the George Washington National Forest. But we stay outside the forest and head to the Fort Valley Ranch, where it's time to saddle up. You ready to go riding? Yeah. Yeah. Hello, ladies. Welcome to Fort Valley Ranch. My name is Bill, so I'm going to give you a little instruction about riding today. Then after that, we'll mount you up on your horses, get you loaded up, and we'll be ready for our ride. Okay, we're looking forward to it. Are you ready? All right, we're ready to ride. Right. Okay, well, what I'm going to ask you to do is walk up to the top step of the mounting block and to put your left foot in there just a little bit. You want to grab the saddle horn in the back of here. <clears throat> you can swing over nice and easy, okay? We don't want to plop down on them. We want to go over nice and easy. Safety comes first at Fort Valley Ranch, and helmets are an absolute must. Looking good with the glasses. It's definitely a fashion statement. What do you think? Looking good? Looking good. Does it make me nervous? A little bit, but you gotta let them fly, right? Smoke. All right, young lady. Big horse. Step up to the top step. All right. Put your left foot in, swing over easy. It's like riding a bike, That's only it's a horse. Think. Here we go, Shenandoah Valley. Very exciting. Our Wrangler leads us out of the stable gates and heads for the trail. Fort Valley Ranch offers hourly, half day, and full day rides for kids as young as eight. Experienced guides and sure-footed horses make rides safe and comfortable, even for first time riders. The ranch has miles of marked trails, which offer breathtaking views of the mountains. <laughs> Just as soon as the trail opened up to the lake and field in the foothills, we noticed our sunny skies had turned to gray. Like many areas of the country in the summer, even Shenandoah Valley has its share of surprise thunderstorms. The rain clouds move swiftly over the mountains and a sprinkle quickly turns into a downpour. Luckily, we don't mind a little rain and our horses don't either. Our Wrangler, who has been through this before, calmly turns our horses down the trail to the stable. All right, we'll have to take a rain check on the rest of the horseback ride, but at least we've got a good story to tell. Many families travel to the Shenandoah Valley for a lesson in American history. To immerse ourselves in early American history, we head to Staunton, Virginia, birthplace of President Woodrow Wilson and home to the Frontier Culture Museum, a place where history comes alive. Hi. How are you? Oh, hi, ladies. Welcome to the Frontier Culture Museum of Virginia. Thank you. We're here to teach, and what we teach, what it is to be an American. And we begin by this farm. This is the Bowman Farm about 1820 in Virginia, in the Shenandoah Valley. Let's see what life was like inside. Wow, in the 1800s, right? In the 1800s, oh, right. Uh -huh. Yeah. All right, we're ready. Let's go look. Yeah. Okay. Great. Hi, how are you? Doing well, how are you folks? This is great. I love it. I love it. <laughs> the Frontier Culture Museum is a living history museum, and we engage the senses in everything that we do here, from feel, taste, smell, touch. So we want you to do everything that we do. And we use costume interpreters, such as Megan, to portray and talk about life, and particularly here on the Bowman Farm, about 1820 America. So here's Megan. Hi, welcome. Thank you. So as our 1820s farm, we show a farm typical uh, from the Shenandoah Valley is where this farm originates. I have right. a question first. Absolutely. Would you wear that in the summer? I would, yeah, it's kind of summer today, right? It feels really, really hot yeah. it's in the 90s. And I would, um, and I, I have a secret for you, actually. I'm probably actually maybe a little bit cooler than you are today, and I'll tell you why. 
And that's because um, all my clothes are made of really natural fiber, so they breathe really well. So it's cotton and linen. It's really, really nice. The museum's many costume interpreters serve as a connection to the lives of early settlers. They answer visitors' questions about what life was like and teach song and dance. You guys want to do some dancing? Yeah. Here we go. Four, two, three, four, and back. This is the best part. Go ahead. Okay. Well, we like it the fact that, you know, if you like history, you could come here and kind of get a hands-on feel of, of what it was like back in the day and, and how they did things and, and the, the dress that they wear, everything gives it a full experience of, of what they really did back then and how, how they did that. So, and she likes it too. <laughs> Lucky for us, one of the museum's most popular animals lives on the 1820s farm. Our friend Kira brought us along for a feeding. She's over there. Oh my gosh, she's huge. She looks like a mini cow. You're like a pony. She'll eat pretty much anything. I'm doing something I didn't think I'd do today, which is feed a pig. A huge, a huge pig. pig. <laughs> I honestly think that's the biggest pig I've ever seen. The outdoor museum is expansive. The best way to see all 11 permanent exhibits is by foot. But if you'd rather catch a ride, shuttle carts run continuously between exhibits. And golf carts can be rented for a nominal fee. Did you have fun? Yeah. Yeah, we learned so much about history. We did. And yeah. we fed a giant pig. Yeah, that was great, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Can we take him home? No, I don't think so. We'll let him stay here. This is where he wants to live. <laughs> Trust me. It's time to breathe deep and relax at one of Shenandoah Valley's most serene attractions. Located in the northwest region of the valley, the White Oak Lavender Farm is a family-owned business that welcomes every member of the family. During the summer months when the lavender is in bloom, visitors can pick some of these fragrant flowers. All right, hi, how are you? Hi, how are you doing? Good, uh, we're here to learn how to harvest lavender, something we've never done before. Okay. Well, yeah, there's a whole bunch of uses for lavender, uh, but in order to use them, you have to harvest them. So do you guys want to help me out? Yeah. Sure. Okay, here's some scissors. Um, so what you'll do in here is you just kind of walk your way through and you take this plant and you want to go past the first set of leaves and not the second. So you just cut right here and there's your lavender. That's okay. it. All right, we can do that, right? I don't know. You could lay down in this field of lavender, take a nap. <laughs> I almost could. I think I could. You think you could too? It's very relaxing. After picking some lavender, we were off to the drying barn, where lavender is washed and prepared to be made into all sorts of products. Once the lavender is dry, it can be disputted. That's where we jump in. So here you guys are. Here's some bottles. It yeah, just rolling. So good. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? You can smell it. It's really strong here too. Okay, just roll it. And roll it. Roll it. Look at it coming off. That's really easy. What is it? Is it easy? What does it feel like? Like straw? Yeah, straw hay. Like straw? Can you smell it? Yeah. <laughs> you just want to go take a nap now, right, Keelan? Eat this. Yeah, I want to take a nap in this. Yeah. <laughs> and like a mattress like this. And a mattress filled with this? That's a great idea. Next stop is running the lavender flowers through a screen to filter out dust and debris. Once the lavender is clean, it is ready for distillation which is necessary to make many of the handmade products. The girls decide to make a product of their own, lavender halos. We end our afternoon with a sweet treat. The girls with lavender ice cream, and me with a glass of lavender infused wine. So Julie, I have to tell you, the kids are off playing, but sometimes when you're on vacation, it's great to just relax as a mother, and I love this. Um, Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely, we just love having you here at White Oak Lavender Farm, and just coming to the Shenandoah Valley. It's such a beautiful area. Oh, it's beautiful. Cheers. Thank you. Oh, my favorite part is the wine. If you want to get a taste of the Shenandoah Valley, Travel to downtown Harrisonburg for a meal at one of the valley's finest restaurants. The local chop and grill house is located in the historic city produce exchange building. Today, the restaurant pays homage to the building's history by serving creative dishes with ingredients sourced from more than 50 local producers. Oh. I am too. Oh, look at this place. Nice. 
Hi, how are you? Hello, Good, yeah. how are you? Great. Uh, Kelly Carney, three, please. My name is Chris. It's very much my pleasure to be your server today. On the front of the menu, traditional starters, appetizers, salads, and soups. If you see an asterisk, we're proudly showcasing locally sourced products. Let me know if you need to know more about what farms we're using. After hearing about the food, we were ready to order. I think I know what I'd like. Are you ordering now? Are you ready? If you're ready, I'm dying okay. to find out. If not, yes. there's no rush. Yes, so we are ready. In addition to the menu, which highlights ingredients from local farms and vendors, on any given evening, the local chop and grill house is packed with locals and tourists alike. Let's toast her vacation, okay? okay? Or we could toast. Yes, and uh, guess who's coming in tomorrow? Dad, Uncle Greg, and your cousin Donovan, sister Donovan. We'll toast to them. Before we know it, our food arrives and we're ready to dig in. Okay, time to eat. Perfectly cooked, fabulous, and it's locally sourced, which makes it even better. No trip to Shenandoah Valley would be complete without a visit to Winchester, hometown of country music legend Patsy Cline. Located in the northwest region of the valley, this quaint town is home to Civil War battlefields, museums, and a bustling downtown known as Old Town Winchester. Shenandoah Valley is steeped in American history. In fact, even George Washington himself held his first public office right here in Winchester. The city played an important role in the Civil War. It's known as the town that changed hands more than 70 times during the war. Visitors can explore Civil War history by visiting battlegrounds, walking through historic Old Town, or visiting the Old Courthouse Civil War Museum. And that's where I meet up with the girls after a short break. Hey girls, did you have a nice break? Yeah. You wanna go check out Old Town Winchester more? Yeah. All right, let's go. Come on, run! The Loudon Street Pedestrian Mall stretches two full blocks through the heart of Winchester's historic district. There's something for every member of the family on this bustling strip. On a hot summer day, the Splash Park is packed with kids looking to cool off. We'll do that later, okay? Okay, I've got one more surprise for you girls. Are you ready? Yeah. Where do you see where I take you next? Let's go. And just steps from the pedestrian mall, the Shenandoah Valley Discovery Museum is a must-do for families with children. This is the Discovery Museum. Isn't this great? Yeah. Okay, but I've got an even bigger surprise upstairs. Are you ready? Yeah. Yeah, okay, let's go. Opened in 1993, the Children's Museum has four levels of fun for kids of all ages. The exhibits are hands-on and interactive. We head upstairs to make a discovery of our own. Hi guys, welcome. Come on over. So what I have in here today are two Madagascan hissing cockroaches. They're really cool. So they don't have stingers, they don't, um, they don't fly, they don't bite. Absolutely, you may touch it. Oh, you're afraid. Isn't that cool? Do you want to touch? Can I touch? You said he's cute. Wanna try? You want to hold her? Okay, oh, hold your hand out. Baby. She's very sticky. These guys actually blow gas out of the fourth section here, and yes. so they're the only insects that you can hear them pass gas. Ooh. <laughs> Just for gross facts. Like my husband. <laughs> Would you like to hold it? I'm fine. You're fine. Okay. Would you like to hold it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Right. Should hold I do it, it, Amelia? What do you think? Yeah? Is it scary? Okay, there you go. Ooh. We said goodbye to our cockroach friends and got back to exploring the museum. One of the most popular exhibits is the apple packing shed, a nod to Winchester's apple heritage. So this museum was started by three educators 20 years ago, and I can tell you that we definitely have learned a lot, and we've also <laughs> had a lot of fun. All right, keep going. This might take a while. You might just dump the whole bucket in. It might be easier. All right, next round. Only a 20 minute drive from Winchester is a roadside attraction that you have to see to believe. Tucked into a wooded area just off the road, 
Dinosaur Land has been amusing visitors for more than 50 years with its awe-inspiring animal statues. For a nominal fee, visitors can gain access to a prehistoric park that is equal parts camp and charm. More than 50 giant dinosaurs, all different species, line the path. Visitors are actually encouraged to step off the trail for pictures. So don't forget that selfie stick. And if you're brave, make sure to climb into the outstretched palm of the giant ape, which marks the end of the trail. There's no better way to experience the mountains of the Shenandoah Valley than by staying among them. Tucked into the Massanutten Mountains, the namesake resort packs family-friendly adventure into all 6,000 acres of the property. One of the most popular Massanutten playgrounds is the giant indoor and outdoor water park. We're here at Massanutten Resort and this place is absolutely gorgeous. It's not only fun for families, but it really is beautiful. And I'm here with you as the general manager. I just want to know more about this area because it really is gorgeous. Uh, well, Colleen, it's so good to have you here. I, I mean, after a busy day sightseeing and seeing the sights and hiking the Shenandoah Valley, it's time to relax, rejuvenate. And what's great about a water park is it's something for everybody. Grandma's on the lazy river, the kids are on the fast rides. It is really someone for everyone. And we look forward to seeing you on the Flow Rider. We're gonna just hit the water park. Uh, you enjoy it. We're so glad you're here. Thank you. Thanks for having us. It's great. The <laughs> indoor water park is open year round with a set temperature of 84 degrees. It always feels like summer. With eight slides, an adventure river, and a Flow Rider surfing attraction, there's something for every member of the family to enjoy at the indoor park. The 80,000 square foot outdoor water park is open between Memorial and Labor Days. And that's where I catch up with Greg and the girls. Group hug! Yes! Everybody's together! <laughs> Great! Okay, so I know you probably want to get back into the water park, right? I think we're going right back. Okay, so yes. go right back. Dad and I are going to chill here for Bye, a Bye, girls. Bit. Surrounded by breathtaking mountain views, the outdoor water park delights both high adrenaline seekers and those just looking to bathe in the sun. Sit down. Okay. We're going to Cabana. Oh, I know. You got nice. the Cabana? The this is relaxing, but have you hit the slide yet? I have not. I've decided I'm going to cheer you on and just watch the mountain view. But I know you're going to hit the slide. Can I go now? Yes. I'm going. <laughs> you can't wait. <laughs> I just got you. Okay. All right, go, honey. Have fun. Bye. I'm just going to relax in the view. Greg joins the girls for a high thrill ride on the Rockingham Racer. The outdoor water park closes before the indoor park, so make sure to plan your day accordingly. After a final race on the mat slide, Greg and the girls head indoors to explore some more. They splash around the indoor park's central playground, Mass Nutton Meltdown, slide down a tube slide, and float around the Blue Ridge Rapids. And the most difficult part of the day at the water park was convincing the girls and Greg it's time to go. Okay, I bet you're worn out. Okay, we've got a big day tomorrow. And more Don't surprises. Go on the slide. <laughs> Maybe one more time in the slide, but after that, we gotta get some rest, okay? okay? I'm telling you, you're gonna love it. For our last adventure in the Shenandoah Valley, there's a one-of-a-kind attraction that doesn't even require you to get out of your car. It's the Virginia Safari Park, the only drive through zoo in the state. Welcome to the Virginia Safari Park. Thank we you. are the biggest park in the Virginia. We have over 180 acres, and we're about to see over a thousand animals today. Oh my goodness, a thousand animals. Yep. Okay, and they're going to come up to the window if you're in a car, right? Yep, they'll come right up to your car, and they'll they'll stick their head right in the window. They'll check you out. They'll see if you brought any food from today. If you didn't, I can't guarantee they won't take something else instead. <laughs> And as soon as we pull through the gate, we are greeted by a very friendly group of llamas, known as the mascots of the Safari Park. I can't get over you can get this close to an animal. Look at this. Look how close we are. You can do this here. Most visitors to the Safari Park drive in their own car, but tractor-driven wagons are also available for larger groups. Good travel tip. You're going to go through a lot of buckets of food here, so buy a lot in the beginning. The three-mile path takes about an hour to drive. I love What we're doing now is trying to shake our food to get the bison down. He likes it. Oh my Here. Bison. Look at that tongue. <laughs> I feel like a dentist. Open. This is an experience you will not want to forget. So don't forget to snap a few photos. I want to take a selfie with the bison. Help come on, photo out. bomb me, bison. When you come to Shenandoah Valley, you have to do this. It's a must do and a truly unique and incredible experience. Isn't that fun? Yeah. yeah. Say goodbye. 
what a fantastic vacation we had in Shenandoah Valley, Virginia. We experienced what life was like for early settlers at the Frontier Culture Museum, marveled at the awe-inspiring formations at Lurie Caverns, strolled through the quaint and historic town of Winchester, and who could forget taking selfies with those hungry bison at Virginia Safari Park? I can't wait to get back to Shenandoah Valley for more beautiful drives and fun adventures. Thanks for watching Family Travel. I'm Colleen Kelly. Enjoy making memories on your next family vacation. I got you walking in. Oh, you did not.